Hey, this is Jake from Mito. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to use the Mito Sheet Python package. So Mito is a spreadsheet interface for Python. And we'll get into exactly what that means. But first, let's just get Mito into our system. So what we're going to do is import Mito Sheet and then MitoSheet.sheet that will call the Mito Sheet package, which you can see brings up this spreadsheet interface. The first thing I want to do here is just get some data into the tool. So I can either pass in a data frame as my argument here, or I can pass in an Excel or CSV file. So I'm going to pass in some Tesla data, click import, and we see that it'll import our CSV, make it a data frame inside Mito, and again, generate the code for that. So everything we do in the Mito sheet is going to generate the equivalent Python code down here. Quickly, before we move on, let's just go to installing Mito. So installing the package, here's our documentation, docs.trymito.io. All I have to do is this command right here, and then this command right here. You can do that in Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Hub, and uh, have Mito ready to go in your notebook. And then all you have to do is call them like this. The first thing I want to do is explore this data a little bit. So we have these dates here for this Tesla stock data we're looking at. Let's add a new column and just pull out the month for those dates. So I'm going to use our month function like that here. We can see now that we've pulled out the month and I'm going to rename this column to month. We see when we do that, it generates the equivalent code for that right here. Now that we have this month column, I'm going to do some exploratory data analysis on this. So I'm going to click our menu here and we're just going to look at some summary stats. So we see all the different months. So we can see January is 141 values, uh, December is 149. We get some summary stats for that month as well. We can also look at the values here and see the distribution of the values and we can filter. So I just want to filter right to, um, let's just say I want it to equal June. So I'll do six. There we go. And again, here are the amount of rows and columns that are left in the data frame after we filtered. And again, when I do that, we generate the code for that filter. And we see that code is auto-documented as well. Really powerful feature. So you don't have to document your code. I can undo that filter by clicking undo. Here we go. And we can see that we go back to our base set of 1,629 rows. So I'm going to close that. Next, let's do a pivot table. So I'm going to click pivot. We're just going to look at the months here for this Tesla stock data. And then for value, let's just do the average open value for each of these months. So I'll do mean as our aggregation type. We see that data is a little bit messy. I'm going to close this here. So now I can just format that to, let's say, three decimal places. There we go. And as I go down here, we'll see we generated the code for that pivot table we made. So this is a good example of in Mito, you could do things really quickly. You know, writing that code yourself might take you a little bit of time going to Google, going to Stack Overflow, and Mito, a few clicks, and you get the code in literally seconds. And the nice thing here is when Mito, when we make a pivot table, we actually are creating a new data frame. So I'm just going to rename this data frame to, let's just call it pivot. There we go. We renamed the data frame. And now I can run this generated code. And if I actually call pivot here as a data frame, we see we get a pivot table as a real data frame, and I can turn that back into a MITRE sheet with a click of a button and keep analyzing that way. Um, I'm going to move over to another data set now, which is this one. This is about ramen data, and we'll do another quick pivot table. So we have these different brands. Let's just do a count of the brands. So we'll do another pivot table. We have these brands of ramen, and we're going to do a count. There we go. And I'm going to apply a filter. Uh, here, we'll just do ones that contain, we have 355 rows right now, so 355 brands. Let's just do ones that contain, um, you know, uh, the letter M, for example. Now we're at 51. We can do better than do L. 23, perfect. Okay. Now I want to graph this. So I'm going to click our graph button. And I guess before we graph, just note everything we've done here, importing the pivot table, the filter, it's all generating code. And I'm going to click graph here as the x-axis. We'll put the brand, the y-axis, we'll put the brand count. We'll see that we get a nice graph and we can change this chart type as well. So we have a bar chart here, but we could make this a scatter chart, scatter plot, if we prefer that. We could also make this a histogram, if we prefer that. There we go. I'm gonna turn this back to a bar chart though. So here's our table, here's our, our, our graph. And I can style this as well. So let's put a title on it. This is called brand currently. Let's we'll call this brand count. So you can do that and it updates the title. 
We can also name the x-axis and y-axis as well and customize those. And now I can export this code. So this is Plotly that we're using here. So we can generate Plotly code. I'll click Copy Graph Code. And first I'm gonna run this cell and then I'm going to add another cell and we'll see we copy this graph code. So this is a really good example of how Mido can generate code super quickly because as you can see, this is a good chunk of code that even for myself would take, you know, maybe five minutes to get correct and get my chart configured. Or was it Mido? We generated in a few seconds. I'll run this code and we actually get the chart here. And the nice thing about Plotly is that these charts are interactive. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out, all inside the notebook. So yeah, as an overview, Mido, a lot of great features you can use. I'll just quickly go over some of the ones we maybe didn't touch on, which is that we can um, add columns and delete columns. We can merge data sets and join them together. We can format our data. We can pivot, we can graph, um, undo and redo. We can clear our analysis back to just the state where we imported that. Um, import files, we can also export files to a CSV or to Excel, super easy. And again, not just Excel or CSV files you can bring in, but you can also bring in uh, data frames that you're using before the Mido sheet as well. So I hope you check out Mido, get a chance to play with it. It's a really powerful tool. And uh, again, here are the install instructions. So thanks a lot.